Paul Gorzo, also known as the S-Bahn Killer, was a German serial killer in the Nazi era Berlin during World War II. At night, Germany would conduct blackouts to make it difficult for Allied bombers to hit their intended targets. Paul would take advantage of these blackouts at night by stalking and murdering his victims off and on the railroad system. Most of these murders occurred during the height of the war in 1941. So let's talk a little bit about Paul. He was born in East Prussia in 1912 and was adopted by a farmer at the age of 12 where he took his adoptive father's last name, Agorzo. When Paul turned 18, he signed up to join the Nazi party in the year of 1931. He also became a member of the paramilitary branch, the SA. The SA were different from the German army and the SS, as the SS were bodyguards of Adolf Hitler and only answered Adolf Hitler. The SA were also under Hitler's rule, but more so used for street violence and to anyone who opposed Nazi ideology. I wanted to quickly point the difference out of these groups, as there were a few of them with their own purpose. With that said, Paul began working as a plate layer for the National Railroad, also known as the Deutsche Reichsbahn. Paul's attacks began in August 1939 to July 1940. These assaults were done by stabbing, bludgeoning, and strangling. However, these victims were fortunate enough to live. Early fall rolls around in 1940. Paul approaches Mrs. Ditter as she waits for a train. He asks where she lives and if he could visit sometime. She tells him, and it's within two kilometers from the station he works at. Around midnight on October 3rd, Paul makes his way inside Mrs. Ditter's house with her husband, an army draftee, not home. Paul launched his attack by strangling her neck, breaking her hyoid bone, and cutting her carotid artery with a knife. She bled to death in her kitchen. Her body was found in the afternoon, as well as her four-month-old and 18-month-old children alive in the living room. Paul's next attack was November 4th, 1940. Elizabeth Bendorf was boarding the S-Bahn when Paul directed her to a more comfortable compartment. This was an empty train cart, and he sat with her. The first stop comes, and Paul strikes her several times on the head and back with a piece of lead cable. Elizabeth, now unconscious, was thrown out of the train. Surprisingly, she survived, but could only describe Paul as someone who wore a dark uniform. The next attack would be a fatal one. Miss Frank was a 26-year-old nurse. She rode the train alone on December 4th of 1940. Paul entered her train cart and attacked her with an iron rod shattering her skull and threw her body out of the train before the next stop. Her body was found within hours by authorities. Three women attacked and thrown off the S-Bahn got the attention from the Crippo, also known as the Criminal Police. They released information about Mrs. Ditter's death this led to propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels telling the Crippo to not mention anything of an S-Bahn killer stalking women on the newspapers. This was to protect morale in the armed forces, so soldiers would not fear their wives, daughters, or girlfriends to be in danger. However, Frank wasn't the only victim that night. Paul got off the S-Bahn station and hid about half a mile away. Within one hour, a 19-year-old woman, Ermgard Fressy, was walking from the station. Paul knocked her out with an iron rod, fracturing her skull, and struck her several more times. She was found alive, but died at the hospital. Unsure if there was a connection between the deaths, the Crippo placed undercover officers and women to ride the trains. However, his position in the SA gave him knowledge of police plans. The information on the blackouts also helped him coordinate his next attacks. Seven days later, Paul came across a pregnant 27-year-old woman, Hedwig Ebor, on the train, and he tried to strangle her. She fought back, but unfortunately she was thrown out from the car. She was found alive, but never regained consciousness before dying at the hospital. The Crippo began focusing on the area Paul was working. 
They interviewed around 5,000 S-Bahn employees and started reviewing employee records. Rumors were spreading fast, and Joseph Goebbels asked Nazi Party volunteers to escort any women that were traveling alone from the S-Bahn. Ironically, Paul, being a member of the SA, participated and volunteered. It would be another month before the next murder, but indirectly, the escort program provided Paul's next victim. On the night of February 11th, 1941, Paul was waiting on the boarding platform after finishing his volunteer escort shift. 39-year-old Johanna Voigt asked if he would ride with her to the next station. Once on the train and alone in the same compartment, Paul struck her on the head several times with his iron rod. Voigt was a mother of three and three months pregnant at the time. After numerous strikes from his iron rod, Paul threw her off the train. The Crippo started a rumor that it's ending the S-Bahn monitoring program on July 1st, 1941. This was done in hopes of luring the killer out into the open. The last victim was 35-year-old Frida Casiol. She was stalked once walking away from the station and her skull crushed by Paul's iron rod. She was found dead around 4.30 a.m. A week from the incident passes, and the Crippo had interviewed one of Paul's co-workers. His co-worker mentioned Paul would leave work sometimes by climbing a fence and leaving only to return before his supervisors would notice. They almost decided against interviewing him again because he was working when some of the attacks happened. But once they realized he was working alone on these incidents, they decided to question him again. They confiscated his clothes and sent it to a lab where blood was identified on his uniform jacket and pants. Interrogation was done by the head of the Crippo, William Ludke, under a single light bulb. There were five bleached skulls of the victims on a table in the interrogation room. Paul eventually admitted to the killings and provided a written confession and also admitting to another 31 assaults. While he did admit to his crimes, Agorzo tried to excuse them by blaming a Jewish doctor for intentionally giving him the wrong treatment for his case of gonorrhea. He said this because the doctor knew of his hatred for the Jews. He finished by saying the treatment provided by the doctor altered his mind, leading him to not be responsible for his actions. The Nazi party revoked his membership on July 20th, and prosecutors indicted him on July 23rd for eight murders and six attempted murders. He wasn't charged for the rest because his counts given already amounted to the death penalty. The next day he was put on trial, and six hours later he was found guilty and handed the death penalty. Thirteen days after the initial arrest, on July 25th, Paul Agorza was beheaded by guillotine. I find this to be an interesting yet strange story as to what defines a serial killer at the time in Nazi Germany. This was deemed an official serial killer to the Nazis. As much as they didn't want to believe a German could be capable of doing so, even though the Nazi party itself was full of them due to their ideology. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. As always, thank you for listening, thanks for stopping in, and take care.